there is something interesting that comes about with his being out. And that will transition us into our next topic. Perhaps as a result of this, the fact that you don't have time. Let me get this ready. Boom. Perhaps because the Mavericks don't have the luxury of time now with potentially four of their top maybe five or six players out, you now have scheduled against the Pelicans the season debut tentatively. Tentatively. He's listed as questionable, similar to Maxi. Kristaps Porzingis is tentatively projected to start and make his debut Monday. So here we go. We've been waiting, and I projected out based on Carlisle's comments a couple weeks ago that it was probably going to be sometime between, I think I projected sometime between the 11th and the 15th, and I was looking at specific games, and I actually highlighted this game. So uh, let me see here. So it's something where the team now has to, the team has to make some adjustments because your projected starters are looking like Josh Green, Luca. You're going to have Hardaway Jr. You're going to have KP, and you're probably going to have Willie Cauley Stein as your starting five. That's a little bit of a mismatch, a little bit of a hodgepodge of a lineup, but it is still something where if KP looks pretty good, you know I don't expect him to hit the ground and immediately be bubble KP that was just wrecking fools last year in the in the bubble in Orlando but KP prior to let me see here his actual figures prior to yeah yeah during the bubble his last game actually was game three against the Clippers in the playoffs he had he had 34 points 13 rebounds on 11 of 18 shooting five of nine from three and seven of seven at the line that is pretty, pretty impressive. During the bubble altogether, including the play-in seeding tournament, he averaged 30.5 points, 9.5 rebounds, and he was named to the first-team all-seeding team. That's just some dumb little thing the NBA did as well, but it basically recognized the guys who, for that final eight regular season games, regular season games in the bubble, uh, stood out, and they ranked them as far as first-team, second-team, whatever. He was all first-team first team seeding uh, tournament. So pretty impressive there for KP. If you bring him back, I don't expect him to hit the ground immediately at that level. But if you bring him in, again, you improve your floor spacing. You get another guy who can knock down shots. His conditioning might be a bit of a thing. I know KP had been talking in the previous weeks leading up to this that he was going to be ready to go when things came about. But as much as you try, you can go full speed and practice it's not quite the same as game speed because there's just something a little different when you have, uh, it's not controlled bursts. It's just constant up and down the court. You have your adrenaline pumping a little bit harder. And as a result of that, your body is basically burning through energy faster. You're going to get winded. And so I think Dallas is going to have to be a little bit strategic with how they use him. You're probably going to see him. He'll probably play a decent amount of minutes by which I mean, he'll probably play something like, around 25 minutes but it's going to be I think smaller bursts I think you're going to see him uh, used in a more strategic way as Dallas tries to navigate these waters I'm not even certain that this is when Dallas wanted to bring him back I think the status of Maxi and the other guys that they're missing put them in a little bit of a bind where it's kind of like all right well uh, we weren't. We were still kind of toying around with the idea of when we were bringing you back in the next few days, and uh, I guess it's now. I guess we're going now. So KP will make all signs indicate he's questionable, but he's been projected as the probable starter. He will make his season debut. This is pretty pretty good timing. If I mean all things considered, this is good timing for the team. Right as they're getting depleted to get a guy like this back is substantial for this team. So we'll see how it goes against the Pelicans. That's a really, that's a nice team. Obviously Zion's a beast. Not having Maxi potentially is going to really hurt this team because Maxi put the clamps down on Zion last year and basically made him have a rough night altogether. So I'm curious to see how KP comes in and how the, you know, front court of him and 
Willie Cauley Stein looks. That's two big dudes with a lot of length and athleticism. I want to see what they're able to bring to the table. Yeah, there's no excuses. There's no deflecting from any of this or looking at this and saying like, well, you know, the Mavericks are at a disadvantage here. For this game, yeah, it's a disadvantage. It sucks. The NBA has only had to postpone a couple of games so far, and they're trying to work around a lot of things. Maxi, we don't know yet. It was reported that he's out 10 to 14 days, which could cost him as many as five to eight games. Like, that's significant for a guy who's injection into the starting lineup and his three-point shooting during that stint has been so invaluable to this team. But, you know, things happen. He's going to have to work around his status and everything else where they're going to have to manage him. They're going to have to manage the other guys that are out. I don't know if Hardaway or Burke or both can keep rolling like they were rolling in or or not in Orlando, but rather against Orlando. But that would be very, very good if they can. You can't ask Luca to go out there and score 40 for you. Like, can he do it? Sure. But you don't want to have to ask him to do that. You'd rather be able to let him be uh, more the facilitator, kind of like he was last game. And whether or not Burke and Hardaway can step up and do that, maybe KP knocks down a couple of outside shots, assuming he actually does make his debut against the Pelicans, then, you know, keep the pressure off Luca. Make teams, you know, that that's one thing I really love about bringing back Burke particularly. He's able to create not just his own shot, but he's able to create a little bit off the dribble. You got another playmaker on this team, and Brunson's pretty good at this as well. But Brunson's been up and down and everything since he came back. I know Burke had a little bit of a slow start this year as well. But I really like, and we saw it in the bubble a lot, but I really like how Trey Burke is able to take some of that pressure off of Luka here and there. Haven't seen a whole lot of them rolling together yet, but if he's able to do that a little bit in this game and make Luka not have to just be the everything man where he has to lead the team in points, assists, rebounds, steals, uh, do everything for everyone, then... I think it'll be better off in the long term, not just the immediate picture of, hey, we won this game, but I think it's better off if the team can have some guys kind of step up and grow into these roles where they're not just needing Luka to be absolute superstar stud for the team to be you know, competitive with the very best teams in the league. What's up, first name, last name? Appreciate that, Drogon. Guys, if you haven't already, drop a like. Uh, I, I said earlier, leave a comment below. It's a live stream. I don't know why I said that. Just give me a shout in the chat if you're watching and let me know where you're watching from. Always curious to know. Uh, let's see here. Milk tea, will KP return tomorrow? He is slated. He's questionable currently, but he is projected to return against the Pelicans, which that game, unless I've just completely lost my sense of time and space immediately off of vacation is tonight. I don't know why I did it that way, but here we are. We have to live with it. I have to live with it. And now so do you.